All right, welcome to the Robert Show. We are here at Snowflake Summit. It's day one, and look who I'm with me, Somesh, uh, who's the CEO and co-founder at Pantomath. Uh, Somesh, welcome to the Robert Show. Such a pleasure to finally meet you in person. Obviously, we've seen the great work that Pantomath does, uh, and I'm kind of excited to learn more about it. Uh, so, would you like to uh, share a little about yourself and also tell us a little about Pantomath? Sure. Yeah. Thanks for having me, Ravit. Uh, First of all, yeah, great to be here at the Snowflake Summit this year. Um, yeah, for, for everyone that doesn't know me, Sumesh Saksayan, I'm the CEO and founder of Pantomath. Um, backstory, in case you didn't know, um, so I was actually the head of data and analytics at GE Aerospace before starting Pantomath. So for GE, I led a 100 plus person team supporting 18,000 data consumers. Wow. And uh, I saw, you know, not just as a practitioner, I saw not just my, my technical teams, but my business stakeholders, my executives all struggle with data quality and data reliability challenges. Right. I saw um, my team, my again, my data teams, um, learn from the business very reactively that we had data issues. Mm. And then they had to go on these wild goose chases. They had a, you know, back and forth, troubleshooting, relying on tribal knowledge to manually reverse engineer data pipelines across different oh, uh, data platforms. and. And trying to identify the root cause, understand the impact across the board. You know, all of it caused productivity loss, not just for my team, for the business as well, but more importantly, data downtime, data reliability issues, lack of trust in data as an organization, with right. poor decision making on bad data. That's where the idea of Pantomath really came about. And so Pantomath in a nutshell is a data pipeline observability and traceability platform, mm -hmm. uh, essentially a real-time monitoring solution for looking at the health of the entire end-to-end -end data pipeline, right? Mm -hmm. Going from data producers to data consumers and touching every single hop in between. Mm -hmm. So we monitor the health of the pipeline itself as well as the health of the data flowing through the pipeline. The Very vision, yeah. yeah, and the vision of the company really is to you know, automate data operations for larger Fortune 500s and enterprises through this pipeline observability and traceability platform to drive data reliability, trust in data as an organization, eliminate poor decision making with bad data. Very interesting. So it comes with the, all the experience that you've had uh, and all the problems that you also faced and the data engineering teams faced uh, there. So I'm kind of curious to also learn a little about, because you've spe seen this space very closely over the years. I'm kind of curious to learn a little about how you've seen the space evolve over the last four years or five years, because I've seen massive changes in this space, but at the same time, there's a lot of progress. Right, uh, enterprises are now more aware about uh, having data observability in their data stack. So I'm kind of curious to learn a little about that. Yeah, no, great question actually. There's been a lot of evolution in the data observability space. Um, if you think of the thesis with which it started, right? Uh, it started with the thesis that application performance monitoring, you know, mm -hmm. APM solutions like Datadog, Dynatrace, New Relic, they aren't really geared towards solving data quality and reliability challenges, right. rightfully so. They're geared towards application monitoring, infrastructure monitoring, and also the manual reactive data quality checks are exactly that. They're manual and they're reactive. Right. Um, and so there came a need for monitoring and observing the health of the data itself, and that was the, the rise of data observability. Mm. Um, but the challenge that most data observability players in that first wave of data observability uh, in the last few years face is that they're only focused on data at rest, right? right. Data at rest is looking at, for example, a Snowflake or Databricks table, um, and they're, they're checking to see if it has missing data, right? That's a data volume check. Right. They're looking to see if the data is stale or not through data freshness checks. They're looking at the data lineage, which is a pretty popular feature in data catalogs itself, right? It's table one and two are joined to create table three, and you understand the data journey uh, exactly. through data lineage, and all of this is data at rest. While that's important, it's only a piece of the puzzle, unfortunately. And so through Pantomath, what we're seeing is a new wave of, of data observability 2.0, for lack of a better phrase, that not just looks at data at rest, but also data in motion. Right. Because think about it, right? If you have a table in Snowflake that went from 100,000 records to 50,000, it didn't just lose rows by sitting there. Something had to have happened upstream of that exactly. causing that issue. That's the data in motion component. Maybe the, maybe the data came in late through data latency problems. Maybe a job or pipeline broke somewhere or didn't start at the right time. Exactly. And so data at rest and data in motion together make up the holistic end-to-end cross-functional and cross-platform data pipeline. Mm. And the emphasis on not just data at rest, but data in motion is what's needed to truly solve the problem because with just a data quality check or data volume or freshness check, you can understand, okay, something's wrong, but what do you do from there? How do you go resolve the problem? How do you take action on it? 
right. there has to be something upstream of that that broke that, right? Totally. And data at motion, just to explain it a bit differently, is looking at the data ingestion, transformation, orchestration, refresh jobs across all those different data tools and platforms mm -hmm. that make up the flow of your data, right? Yes. So data at rest plus data in motion together give you that holistic observability and traceability of understanding what's wrong, where it's wrong, why it's wrong, and how to fix it. Because without that, you know, tools would just be a check engine light telling you something's wrong. Exactly. And Pantomath, our vision is to be more than that. To be a diagnostics tool you plug in your car to mm. understand how do you fix the problem? How right. do you bring it up and running again? Right. Okay, th those are pretty good, good insights. That also brings me to another question, which is around, obviously, what do you think are the key pillars then? for data observability, any thoughts around that? Because I know I've read something around that at Pantomat, so I'm kind of curious to learn from you first and what it, what it is for you. Sure, yeah, great question. Again, a few of the pillars are actually pretty well known out there, right? Uh, data quality is an important one. Um, again, reactive data quality checks alone, after the fact, can solve a problem, mm. but understanding the accuracy and health of the data itself, make sure the data is correct, is important. So data quality is definitely a key pillar. Um, data observability, which uh, for a lot of companies is their whole product. For exactly. us as a pillar, it's, a, it's, a, it's just a feature, wow. uh, an yeah. important one. But data at rest monitoring or data observability is a very important pillar as well. Again, looking at data volume checks, data freshness checks, making sure the data is accurate, the mm -hmm. whole complete fresh, all that. Uh, and then a few important pillars, again, that are pretty unique to Pantomath are data in motion monitoring, or rather operational observability. Exactly. Looking at, again, not just the data at rest components, but also the data in motion components that lead to the symptom. Data at rest is most likely a symptom. Yep. Data in motion, what broke in the pipeline leading to bad data, missing data, stale data, that data in motion monitoring of, again, data ingestion, transformation, orchestration, refresh, and BI jobs, monitoring those in real time uh, is very, very important. So that's a key pillar. And then the most important one, in my opinion, Ravit, is actually pipeline traceability. Hmm. And, and so let's talk about that for a second. Pipeline traceability is understanding the end-to-end -end of the data ecosystem and every single data pipeline that's powering data reports and products. Because right. without that, just monitoring alone, monitoring data in motion at rest, whatever, it alone is not going to solve any problem. One of the biggest pain points I lived with as a practitioner at GE in the data space is that it's tough to understand what you've built. Because here's the fundamental issue with data ecosystems. They're built up of these disparate, disconnected tools and technologies, these data verticals of data integration, lake and warehouse, orchestration, transformation, right. BI. Right. Yeah. And your data pipeline is going from those data producers to data consumers, touching each one of those hops. Yeah. But without a holistic understanding of the end-to-end -end pipeline, of again, data in motion and data at rest components, yeah. it's difficult, it's a black right. box. Right. And so what Pantomath has built, very unique to us, is an auto discovery framework that automatically snaps in and understands the end-to-end -end data pipelines. Again, the jobs and data sets that we've built in the data ecosystem that power data pipelines is what we need to first understand. That horizontal representation does not exist today, yeah. right? And so we've married data lineage, which is a pretty well-known concept out there, again, yes. uh, data at rest lineage, with job lineage, deep application level technical lineage to do true end-to-end -end pipeline lineage. Love it, yeah. And that auto discovery of the end-to-end -end pipeline gives us the ability to call ourselves not just an observability, but a traceability platform. And so you take pipeline traceability, operational or data in motion observability, data at rest slash data observability and data quality, put them all together, you now, again, going back to my analogy, don't just have a check engine light that tells you something's wrong and that's about it, figure exactly. out what you can do from there, yes. but truly, a holistic platform that tells you again what's broken, where it's broken, why it's broken, meaning root cause, True. and all the impact points around it to remediate to bring the pipelines up and running in real time. Love it. Uh, all those pillars are fantastic in terms of data quality, data in motion, uh, pipeline traceability, uh -huh. and the last one, data quality. Data quality, yeah. the biggest one as well. Yeah, <laughs> it's been around four. forever, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so these are great insights. Uh, so, Mesh, uh, also quickly want to learn a little about any use cases that you would want to share with our audience, Any anything that you've been hearing from your customers where it's been a good problem solver for them. Sure, yeah, we've been fortunate to be live with some of the largest Fortune 500s and uh, larger enterprises in the, in the, in the world, and so, um, we see day in, day out customers uh, that struggled with bad data, stale data, data quality issues, um, using Pantomath to resolve those problems in real time. Right? We have customers that were losing six to seven figures in revenue um, oh 
yeah, yeah, huge numbers, right? Losing six or seven figures of revenue, sometimes on a monthly basis, um, because they had issues in that data pipeline. And again, the issues where they were catching it after the fact. Their customers, in some cases external customers, in a lot of cases the internal reporting teams were realizing those issues after the fact, and they had to go back and remediate these issues. And again, not just sometimes revenue loss uh, and productivity loss, but also in a lot of cases reputation loss, right? Yeah, exactly. and, so, and so with Pantomath, what we've, ab what we've been able to do is, in real time, detect those problems, tell the business users, hey, don't make a poor decision on this data, it's wrong, mm. just pause that for a minute, and telling the technical teams, the data teams, the you know, data reliability engineers, operational engineers, support teams, that here's what you have to do. Here's how you troubleshoot across all those different data platforms in a single stop shop to quickly identify the root cause, understand right. the impact so you can resolve the issue in real time and then prevent the business impact. So a lot of different use cases out there where the data was latent leading to data freshness issues and stale data and people exactly. making decisions off of that. Sometimes the right amount of data not coming in, mm. sometimes job breaking somewhere. And while those individual siloed tools and technologies would tell you, sure, there's a job that's broken, what do you do from there, right? You don't understand the holistic end-to-end -end impact. For example, again, going back to one of my GE examples, one data ingestion job breaks, something as simple as a failure, let alone the more nuanced things that happen where the data didn't come in right, right amount of records didn't come in, but something as simple as a failure, there are 10, 15, 20 different reports and dashboards downstream mm -hmm. using that or one too many correlation with all those branches you've built and it's impossible to manually try to reverse engineer that and understand how you fix that, it's too late. And so customers were facing, it's not a GE problem, customers were facing exactly. those issues across the board, pretty universal challenges in the data ecosystem um, and, and that's what we've been able to deliver for our customers is 100% is plus ROI in the first three months and real time solutioning to make sure they trust their data, make better data-driven de decisions, and eliminate, again, poor decision-making with bad data that sometimes has costed them millions before Pantomath existed. Love it. I love how y'all are solving that problem because that's one of the biggest pain points for a lot of enterprise leaders out there. Uh, just since we are in this, you know, interesting times of AI, I'm kind of curious to also learn a little about how is AI helping data observability? Yeah, it, it, it definitely is, right? We're still early in the journey, as exactly. most people would tell you. Um, but we see it at Pantomath um, in, in two primary use cases, at least today, right? A lot more, I'm sure, will evolve over time. But two primary use cases with AI that we're solving for, number one, I talked about sending those alerts to business users, True. to data consumers, looking at, again, a Tableau or Power BI dashboard, maybe a home, homegrown application, uh, looking at data in real time. And today, Pantomath would send them a Slack or Microsoft Teams notification saying, hey, don't, don't make a decision off this report. They still, though, have to go in message their IT teams and data teams, hey, what's going on here? When's this going to be up and running? Now, we do have an incident ma management process in Pantomath, so they, it gives them the real-time updates, but it's not quite the same as talking to someone, exactly. right? That cultural piece of like, hey, I need to talk to a human to understand, is this good? Am I all set? Can I make a decision off of this? Can I go you know, build my customers with this data, for example. Um, and through AI, what we're doing is meeting those data consumers, those business users, exactly where they are. Yeah. With a simple chat interface, now they can actually talk to um, AI and understand, hey, is this data good? Because again, now we, of course, Pantomath itself, that's where the no, name like, comes from. Yeah. Pantomath means someone that knows it all, has a holistic understanding of what's broken, where, why, in real time. Um, and through the, the Gen AI models, we can actually have a conversation with our data consumers, hundreds of data consumers, and tell them, hey, now the report's good versus it's not a green or red check light, essentially, but right. through a conversation, give them trust and confidence in data. That's one of them. Um, and the second one, actually, uh, pretty ambitious, but um, today, even as much as Pantomat solves with the end-to-end -end, uh, cross-platform pipeline lineage and traceability, uh, all auto-discovered and real-time monitoring of data at rest and data in motion, um, there's still a human loop component. There's still a manual component uh, like there is in any application. Yeah. So you have to go and understand what's wrong, how you fix it, and so on, right? Um, the vision really is, is to automate root cause analysis and self-heal pipelines. Yeah. Um, if we can fully automate the root cause analysis process and understand truly what's broken and recommend users, you know, how do you fix it? But more importantly, it's ideally take it a step for further, sure. saying I'm going to fix your pipeline across all those different siloed off platforms for you and heal that entire pipeline, remediate the issue to begin with, truly automate data operations. That's the goal, that's the vision. Still early, we're not there yet, but that's what we're striving towards. There. 
it's yeah. going to evolve very fast. Absolutely. Uh, these are fantastic insights. And uh, Somesh, uh, just keeping time in mind, obviously, I also want to let our audience know if they want to reach out to you, where can they do it? If they want to learn more about Pantomite, it's the be- what's the best place? Is LinkedIn sure. a good place? Yeah, LinkedIn's a great place. Somesh Saksena uh, is where you can find me at Pantomath. Um, our website is just pantomath.com, as simple as that. Uh, P-A-N-T-O-M-A-T-H.com. So, would love to connect with folks here at the Summit and elsewhere and uh, chat data observability. Awesome. This is great. Thanks for visiting the Robert Show. So, Mesh, uh, such a pleasure to chat with you and looking forward to having a blast. Likewise. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.